How much is this Kong slide gonna slide? I got a figure eight on my dummy here. Let's drop it. Three, two. Finally, after about 1,000 requests, I'm testing personal anchors. Personal anchors are probably the scariest things to fall on because you potentially could have it where you're clipped lower than you are. And so if you fall twice as far as the rope you have in the system, that's called a factor two fall. And that is where you generate the highest force because there's not enough material to absorb you relative to if you were to just take a normal fall climbing and you have a belayer, assuming you don't fall past the belayer. What I have here in my hand is the Petzl of all the just and we will be testing this. The Kong slide is nice, light and simple. It has a hole for the carabiner and two holes for the rope to where it pinches on itself and that holds. And when you tilt it up, you can extend it and then clip. I've already tested that part. And then we tested the camp swing as well. Put the carabiner in the back of the hole and it's very much like an ATC guide where it will hold you until you bend it up and you can extend it out. Now, let's find out how well they all do. That's pretty good. It held, but slipped, and the stopper knot didn't get jammed up in it. And that's at a force you could uh, still write home to mom about. Here's the eight mil nylon accessory cord. We got that much tail. Let's see if it all slips to the stopper knot or not. Two, one. Oh, good thing we had a stopper knot. I'm just really shocked by this number. I find the Joker 9.1 actually slides a lot better in this slide. Let's give that a little bit more tail right there and our eights on our dummy. Oh, it didn't suck it up to the to the knot. You are not guaranteed these results if you don't have a fresh knot. I'm pretty happy with the Joker. All right, let's try the Kong slide with the Opera 8.5 millimeter. Oh no, that's not ideal. I was really hoping this would be a, not that. Wow, and it was five and a half. That's a nope in my book. Camp swing comes with this rope. There's a terminated eye on this side so it doesn't pull through. If it gets sucked up in there, we girth hitched it to that. It doesn't seem very far, but that is twice the distance it's gonna fall as you have rope in the system. Three, two, one. 5.77 is not too bad. Definitely got sucked up. That is good they have that there. And the girth hitch seems to be doing just fine. How was it for you? So good. 8.5 opera in a camp swing. Oh, if that didn't have a stop or not, that would have totally gone through. But it was very soft. The long awaited Petzl of all the just with the Petzl Attache or attache. Did I butcher it both times? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Girth hitched it to our dummy here and we're gonna go with a little bit of a longer fall with only about uh, one metric foot of tail and then we'll maybe do this one uh, with a short fall to see how much it slips since we have two of them to work with. Four point nine seven, and it did not slip all the way to the end. This stuff feels really fuzzy right here. So this now is our second side. We're gonna have it a lot shorter, with about that much tail. Uh, that was roughly the same violence, actually. I think it slipped. This seems shorter and that seems way longer than the way I said it. Okay, I made no adjustments. Let's see what happens if I just drop it again. Five point six six is a little harder. It looks like it slipped a little bit more from Scott's wall gear. And it's got this buckle. And this is the only one out of the things we've tested up here so far that you can adjust while there is a load on it. But if you fall on it, what happens? Where's the line scale? 
What's the force? 7.59. And this should be up there. Did it break at the buckle? Uh, there's nothing in the buckle and there's two pieces of webbing over here. So don't whip on those. Now it's not necessarily a good idea to be testing this in this video because it kind of gives the idea that this is a personal anchor and it is not. This is a positioning device. However, the reason I am testing this is because so often in aid climbing while well, you are using this to go piece to piece that you start to go above it and then you do risk falling on it. And it, as we saw, it's not a good idea. But a daisy chain or daisy loops are also not a good idea to be clipping yourself into going above them and then falling. Now, if your bolts are right here, it's super good enough. It's fine, it's what it's intended for. But if you're on top of a cliff and you are clipped by your feet and then fall off of it, that would suck. This is less likely to break on you, though you would be damaged. It'll break approximately when you break. So this is not something you wanna fall on. I just wanna make sure we're very clear about that. Now let's slow pull and see what happens if you were to get slowly heavier. Oh, oh! so that answers you my were question. You right. It is cutting here and not in the cam. So this isn't what I would call a personal anchor. This is more of a positioning device for aid climbing. I know, that is a, that's, a, that's an angle. I wouldn't want to fall on that. Ask me how I know. Now let's see when this slips. Oh, sick. 3.3. Oh, that's awesome. 2.9. 2.9, 3.3 was here. That's absorbing a ton of force. So the loop here, you're not supposed to cross load. Don't tempt me with a good time. Oh, okay, that's why. Didn't it slip below that? Look, it's a dumb absorber. In case you do this dumb thing and cross load the stitches. <laughs> Let's see what this camp swing does next. Oh, what's it at? Oh, it's dropping. Oh, there we go. It's doing that kind of stuff. Oh. 2K in range is when it slips. So that is crossed over in there. And so I don't think it's going to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Step aside, ladies. <laughs> oh! oh! I'm going to use that out of context. <laughs> it would slip more easily in the future. Uh, but it doesn't feel like wreck. So calipers say 10.3 millimeters. Who knows what camp calls it? <laughs> camp doesn't have a warning image on here not to ring load this loop. I wonder if that's a misplaced faith in humanity. This is sick. Super Ooh. similar to the Petzl one. Now let's see a slip and slide. Ah, 4.8. 4.3. Oh, that is so glazed. There you go, it was more than four. Now let's see what the eight mil does on the slide. Oh, wow, it slips. It slips in the slide. At those numbers. Ah, see it jumped like a munter. This is you falling. Now the last test with the slide is the first thing we dropped and that is with the Swift Protect with the Technora. Uh, in the dynamic rope, and that is cut resistant or whatever. Well, I found it to be quite hard to uh, release the pressure under load. That's why we experimented with the 9.1 Joker. And I just want to make sure that was on camera, that I found that this had a little too much grip and wasn't as smooth when I used it personally. But do whatever you want. We sell it all by the foot. Three, four, <laughs> five. What's that noise? Sounds like it's ripping. Oh, yeah. 4.5 was our average. 4.2 sometimes. So we saw this on the drop test sample too. All of these like off-white fibers like came out and see here that it's smooth and they're intact, but it's like they're breaking here. Uh, that's the Technora. Yeah. So I found that I didn't like how stiff it was to try to extend these out when I mostly was aid climbing and I would pull them in and out all the time. And so I thought, ooh, what if I use a skinnier rope? And after the test you saw and additional tests that I have not included in this video, I find that the skinnier ropes do extend better, but then they don't 
hold when you need them. They come with the diameters of ropes they do for a reason. I know. I'm still not completely sold on the perfect personal anchor with the perfect diameter of rope. The Joker 9.1 seems to be my go-to for the Kong slide, but even that is going to be difficult to position yourself over and over and over if you're using something like that to aid climb. Now I've been practicing not using this while I aid climb and not even having it on my ladders if it's C1 or a bolt ladder. My ladders are basically free soloing, just don't drop them. And I find that if I'm not tying myself into a knot all the time, that this is actually making it a lot easier for me to aid climb. That's what the all fifi or the a fifi hook would be is a temporary rest while you position yourself for the next thing instead of pulling this in every single time. Now, if I'm aid climbing something difficult and or overhanging, it is nice to be able to pull myself incrementally up because it's hard. And if I need to lower myself out, I can do it by pushing the buckle while my weight's on it. Whereas the Metolius Easy Daisy, you have to take your weight off of it to remove it. But it's also a lighter buckle than this. And when we tested that in the drop tower, it's also something you're not going to want to fall on. It is static and not intended for that. It even says on there, not a personal anchor. Now we did a whole video on a Purcell Prusik video and the thumbnail looks something like this. And the theory behind a Purcell is that if you were to fall, it would absorb some of your fall and it more or less did. You can go watch the video on that. But what I didn't like about it was how bulky it is. And that's as close as you can get unless you do this other trick that we show in the video where you extend it all the way out and then clip that loop and that would get you closer. It's still not a perfect personal anchor, though it is cheap to make and it's versatile and you can make it whatever length you want. Mm -hmm. I used to use these for highlining because when I wanted to move around a lot on a cliff edge, this I could make quite long and I would have the freedom to move. The video I'm going to do soon is shock absorbers or screamers. And if you combine something like this, could it work? I don't know because this disengages supposedly around two ish kilonewtons and this breaks at eight. So I don't know if you want this much bulk or if you just want a Yates shorty, they make those as well. That is just more rabbits to chase. I recently put out a video about reslinging cams and I tried to have all the information in one video and then after posting it, I got good feedback and more ideas and I just might have to make a follow up video to that. And what I learned is I'm not going to have every answer for personal linkers in this video. So please leave helpful comments that will steer my next video and what I test because I know there is more things to chase that I can't do in this video. Every time I post a video like this, I'm asked, what is that thing you use to lift up your dummy on the drop tower? This is a Z2R drill powered pulley that we sell on our site and we are the exclusive distributors for. We have a lot of information on the product page and an entire video about it. I don't recommend that you change the rope out that the Camp Swing and Petzl Evolve just come with because they have that rope in there for a reason, even though sometimes it can feel stiff to use. Now we do sell a lot of rope by the foot and if you don't see exactly what you want, please ask us and we will consider cutting up a perfectly good rope to sell you a few feet of it. But I think it's very helpful to be able to buy different diameters of dynamic ropes for different purposes, whether it's cow tails, you need something for your Kong slide, and it's, I think, nice to have options. Now we put a tremendous amount of work into our Saturday emails to not only show you this stuff that we've been testing that the algorithm might have not shown you, but a lot of behind the scenes, little articles about stuff we're learning that is only good in written form and some sales occasionally. But if you wanna go sign up for a full value newsletter, please do that at hownotto.com slash sign up. We also do weekly giveaways for a $100 gift card to the hownotto.store for anyone who opens their email. Cheers.